Well, hello, welcome back to Drawing with Fire. I am Valerie, your neighborhood biography artist, here to help guide you on your burning adventures. And I'm joined today with not feeling so well, hubby. Okay. He's not feeling good today. You know, Crane could help. It's okay. All right, so I'm going to be doing mushrooms today, and hopefully, this looks all right. Hi, Eve. Hi, Cheryl, Sian, Grace, Philip. Did they miss anybody? If not, we'll get them. So I'm going to be doing mushrooms today, but I want to quickly start off with um, helping a friend over from my Drawing with Fire Facebook group. Sheila has been working on a study for a very personal piece. And so all we're looking at is technique and the reference photo and how, you know, she, she's asking for help and this is a short hair the it's a rottweiler her name is jessica and she's no longer with us so hopefully you can see this okay this is sheila's burning and right now like i said this is a study she's planning to do a bigger one and what we're looking at here is what i want to focus on is the tonal value and the direction of the fur but what is kind of causing an issue is Sheila's original reference photo. And actually, I am going to pop it clearer up here so you can tell that this reference photo is a really dark photo. And that's causing a lot of Sheila's um, issues and trying to get her values right and fur direction right. Unfortunately, this photo cannot be retaken. Um, so trying to make do w w with what we have, normally I would suggest a much better reference photo, but under the circumstances, it's completely understandable. What I did do is take Sheila's other photo of Jessica um, a couple of days ago, and I had to do some tweaking to get a clearer reference overlaid so that Sheila could see the fur and the direction and a little bit better of the tonal values. And this morning, this is me playing on my tablet trying to give Sheila a better view of hopefully what I can explain a little bit more here. I think, for one, this is still her first layers trying to get them down and it's it doesn't look right it never looks right when you are still in that ugly stage but there are some things that stand out to me that i would try to do a little differently and that would be blending out blending out the fur from the darks to the lights and making sure i have the right fur direction because if we look at the lighter reference photo which i guess i can pop this one off there we go if we look at the lighter one we have the fur going in multiple directions and that is because the fur is following the muscle and skeletal bases of jessica so when you change the direction of the fur it is going to look different so i really need to try to stick with that direction let's see here pop that up so i can see so right here like with this it is going to be dark but the fur is going more this way versus looking at the reference photo it actually goes up a little bit and it's not as quite of a thin harsh line and the fur is a little bit longer so with the strokes looking even shorter especially around the eye and not following the direction of the plane it's it's not going to give you the feeling of jessica and having her pop off the wood if that makes sense uh, let's see here kind of have it at an angle let's see if i can <clears throat> excuse me do it a little bit better so and this area is darker and what you can do, let's see here, this isn't a very dark pencil, 
but the fur needs to be going more in this direction and longer strokes and you don't have to put every bit of the hair in because looking at it you could do more shading do the shading first and then put in more of the prominent fur lines and that would give you the softer darker fur without it going too dark and it'll feel less coarse let's see here do i not have you know what can i have a sharpie or a micron that's over there it'll be easier for me to you know i'm gonna move the hummingbird because knowing my luck <laughs> it would go through the paper right onto the burning don't want that thank you that works so let me make sure I'm on and I need to be able to see the reference photo while I'm doing this but so far while I'm clicking things do we have any questions no Sheila am I hitting the the right things for you Let's just tape it up so the fan doesn't move it. Okay, so taking some pins, what we got here. If looking at the reference photo, it looks like, and, and I'm looking at the lighter one because I also know that Sheila wants to lighten up her burning altogether. She doesn't want it as dark as the full on reference. And I'm going to have a hard time blending this out, but the hair texture direction changes. And then we got longer fur coming from the eye area. So we want to follow that direction. And these are even longer. Your shortest um, hairs for this doggy is going to be around the nose, and it gets shorter near the muzzle. So you don't want all the same length of strokes. Let's see here. So bring it, in. and actually it goes closer to the eye. So if you actually just on a lower setting, so you could build the heat up, you could actually, yeah, let me see if I got a bigger pin here that'll work a little bit better. Here we go. That's dry. No. Okay. Can't use that one. Oops. Sorry. I use, that's a reminder I need to throw it away. <laughs> so if we fill it all in a little smoother in the direction that it's going. Let's see here. Now here on the eye, it actually comes down more. We want to follow these planes because underneath the eye, we've got a ball, an eyeball. So the fur is going to follow the direction of that ball. And then it's going to come out and be a little looser. But you can, the easiest way is going to be starting off with a uh, similar shader. I know you don't, I know you have the Peter Child, but a similar shader tip to this. And, and burn it in and then you can go back with your skew um, and whatnot and put more of just the texture of the fur without putting in every single fur stroke but the biggest thing is getting the value Can I have a bigger Sharpie over there, please? That way I can fill this in quicker. I don't care what color it is. 
Thank you. There we go. So just maybe going with the direction. Let's see here. Looking at the reference photo, the eyes a little because of the circumstances, the eyes are a little more squinted. And I don't know. Kilo, which eye are you looking at on the reference photo so I can kind of draw it in a little bit? Because the eye from the reference photo that I am looking at up here, the eye is more open because that's how the photograph of Jessica was. Let me see here. Fill this a little bit more. I'll just wait till Kilo answers. But following the fur is going to be one of the two biggest aspects that's going to make your burning come out the way you want it to. Like I said, I know it's hard to see on your original photo. Let's see here. So this is, on Jessica, it was darker here. And you've got this light strip. And I know that you're holding that off as representing the highlight from your original photo. But this is probably also what's throwing you off. And let's see here. I'm trying to figure out how I can do this. Eh with a lighter hand so you still see she said it's just his left eye but are you using the photo that i used just for jessica that i revamped or your original photo let's see I'm trying to see what i got to grab hold on oh i got some white too that'll help All right, let's try this. Sorry about that. All righty, I need to grab, because the black is just too dark. But this, her nose fur, her snout fur, actually curves over the snout like this. No, that's not gonna work. What do we got here? So this area is actually darker and it's curving. So you're not going to have this area as light. It can go, let's see here, as you're fading down here, going in the direction of the fur this way. Now, of course, my lines are not going to be perfect doing this. The fur actually curves over the snout because it's not a flat area. Don't like that pin. Let's try this one. So you. The biggest thing is going in the direction and trying to keep your strokes to the length of the fur that's in that area. So like right here, let's see, okay, I'm still on screen. Right here, the fur around a snout tends to be shorter. So you can either just do a flat burn especially since she's darker in this area. Or, lots of stippling, especially in the lighter areas. That stippling makes it look like the fur is, like the end of the fur is facing you like I am the pen. So this is the dot of the fur facing you. So by putting that in, you get a softer burn 
which keeps it from being as harsh and not feeling as outlined. And then, let's see here, around the snout, her snout changes directions and comes down. So you're going to have that darker here, and then we've got a highlight above. And really, it's not that you're doing bad, Sheila, not at all. It's just, unfortunately, the situation with your reference photo is what's making this a harder um, piece for you. And it's completely understandable. I mean, I, I've i spent a long time looking at your reference photo. That's why <clears throat> I'm picking up on things. But it still would be hard for me as well. So all of this is dark, even in the lighter version of the photo. Let's see. Now I have it. Yeah. Oh. Move the tape. Let's do this. There we go. Then I can see better. So you do have a bit of highlight by your son's lip. And that's a cast highlight from his skin. The light, I'm assuming the, there was maybe a flash used, maybe. But the light hitting your sun's skin is what's reflecting onto Jessica's fur. So right here, this could be lighter, but it's not like really light. In fact, as I look at the reference, that's what's lighter on her is the cast light from your sun. So all this is darker. And then skin changes direction because the bones and muscles change directions. And see, so that is... The skin or the fur? Huh? The skin changes direction or the fur? The fur, because oh. of the muscles and the skeleton. Oh. Those... You said skin. Did I? I'm sorry. Well, skin, fur, doggy. Clarify. Yeah. So I think that is why it's feeling off to you, um, is because it's really important to get the fur direction. Now up here, this is not fully going in this direction. We do have a little bit of um, let's see here, that goes up, the fur is following her forehead indent, and so that's why this area is a little darker. So the easiest thing to do would try to be, would be in the areas that are dark, I would suggest going to your mid-tone burn with a shader and just shading in the direction of the fur. See, because right here you've got the fur going up and in doing that it changes the shape of her head. So you really, let's see here, this is by his eye and this is actually closer in. So this is the shape we're trying to mimic in the burning but if the hair is going straight up it makes her look spiky but if you follow the contour of her forehead because it's rounded and her ear is going to be over here but not seen so just doing this as a flat burn here would be fine this is her ear up here. Just the edge of her ear. And that's where you've got a little darker coming in. As for here, this is a really dark line, especially right here. You can blend the part of the line out here, but this line right here, because there's two different directions of your fur going on, I, 
then you're, you might have to sand just that area to lighten it up. Because the fur, even right here, you can still change the direction of the fur. You've got it light enough that you can change the direction. So if you're taking your shader based on what you've got here and maybe just a slightly higher heat and just start shading in this direction and longer strokes just to blend things out the this hair direction won't show let's see here but let's see here so part of this fur above her eye curves but then you get the fur back here that is rounding like this and that's what you want to preserve to get that shape you started off with a really hard photo Sheila so don't be hard on yourself this is definitely a really hard photo but even with trying to lighten up the photo you're still going to have a dark burn for Jessica because she's a dark doggy and then we also in your reference photo your original she has a cheek muscle where the fur is darker running along with it so that's up to you as to whether or not you want to put it in because in the photo that I altered because um, you're a younger puppy younger doggy there's a little different structure to her muscle because just like with people, the structure of the muscle for dogs and cats change as they get older as well. So I'd say it's up to you as to which direction you want to go with that. Yeah, a lot of this is just paying attention to the reference photo and following the direction of the fur. She won't be completely dark and I don't think you'll have a problem not burning her that way. Let's see here. But fading into your lights only putting in some of the first strokes sorry thinking putting in some of the first strokes in the direction it's going in will still make her feel furry so don't have to worry about that see here now on her eye it looks like you're taking from this photo this is a dark area Doggies, uh, irises take up the majority of their eye. So you can thin that out a little bit, and that helps. Give the definition you're looking for. So here, so this, all this is lighter here, and that's darker. And she's only got a little area of lighter fur. blending out to darker fur which is hard for me to do with the pen because right now I'm only getting one tune all right 
So hopefully, is that helping? Did I make things worse? And she said earlier that it's helping. Does anybody else have any questions? No. Heather's here. Hey, Heather. You're not going to... It's not going to come out as dark as I think you're a little worried about. Um, I still haven't heard back from Peter Childs to test out their burner, so I can't <clears throat> say anything on heat settings. But shading a medium tone will allow you to adjust and go darker where you need to go. And that medium when you're at your lighter, let's see here, this is lighter, this is lighter, this goes this way because the muzzle changes directions. Oops, trying to go with the direction. Your, your mediums won't look as dark once you put the darker areas in. But at the same time, you'll still be able to see her. So I think you'll be okay with that. I don't know if you want to take your reference photo. Let's see here. Actually, you already burned. Ooh. I know, Gila, that you are getting a stand and a... Um, what's the word? projector what you could do just so since you're working on a study and you're trying to work everything out what you could do is when you get your projector put in whichever photo you want to use for your reference whether it's the one I had yesterday or your original and brought and beam it over your burning and this way you'll be able to see that direction better and you'll be able to follow along easier versus trying to you know draw on on your already base burning i think projecting onto your burning with your photo is going to help you a lot and allow you to work out more of what you're going to want to do for your big piece without messing your smaller piece up she the um that you've helped. Awesome. Well, hopefully I helped other people too with it. <laughs> Keila, I appreciate you so much letting me use your photographs. And if people like this, maybe like once a month, I'll pull a burning from the group where somebody's asking for help and we can do this. So now, if we don't have any more questions, let's get on to the mushroom. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Mushrooms. Okay, so I'm gonna have to zoom in for that. I'm gonna start with my spear shader and I think let's see here, which mushrooms do I want to do? So I have I have mushrooms. There we go. I think I'm going to start with the this mushroom right there because that mushroom is the one closest to the water and it's going to get more of the lighting because it is behind our queen so the queen's not blocking it like she is on the lower ones so I'm going to start off with the spear shader I've got it at three and I think I'm going to start with the stem because the stem is darker. What I am going to have to look at doing is I'm going to have to change the direction of the highlight. If you look at the little guy here, in the reference photo, the left side is darker than the right to give the curve effect. I'm going to have to go the opposite because the light is coming this way. So part of the stem is going to be lit up. Uh, water, I guess. 
Let's see here. I was using, trying to see if I need to clean my tip. I just might. Actually, I was burning on the Strathmore um, mixed media board, and that leaves a lot of residue on the pen. So, I'll scooch this over. And there we go. Clean my tip a little bit, make sure I get the paper off. I took a lot of the top layer off. And you'll see that burning <clears throat> on Thursday for the AAC video. Alright, let's try this again. Got my scratch board. I almost wonder if I should turn the fan off. Still got a moth on the ceiling. Come on. Let's go. Hmm. Alright, so this side is lighter. Did you fall asleep? No. You okay? I'm alright. You sure? Because if not, no. yeah. I'll do this one mushroom and we'll cut it short uh, today. Philip says uh, this has helped him too. Awesome. Yeah, I really appreciate um, Sheila giving me permission to do that. In this way, besides the fact that I really don't like typing, <laughs> especially when I got a lot to say, um, it allows Sheila to go back and watch the part of the live if she needs a little bit of a recap. It's always helpful having a second pair of eyes. Yeah. Ooh, thunder! Like, I, I already went through and made the changes that we talked about on Eclipse. Oh, did you? Yeah. And do you feel better with your piece? Yeah, it looks so much better. Oh, good. So remember, there's moss back here. So I'm not going to burn over the line. I'm going to negative burn with the moss to make sure that the stem of the mushroom looks like a stem of the mushroom with the out outlining it. I'm just using the tip, like the very, very tip, because it is a smaller area. And under the cap of the mushroom, we have shading. See, now I can go lighter. Bump it down to two and a half. So we've got lighting coming in here, so it's going to be lighter at the bottom. I don't have anything in this layout of my reference or of my lines I don't have anything that's like a lighter subject that's going to be casting light up underneath the cap so I don't have to go yeah. as light underneath you have some questions please they're technical um, Cheryl is hoping to order the, her Optima mm -hmm. at the end of the month She's going to get four pens. Um, she's asking what four pens would you recommend? I'm trying to remember, because Sheila's in the group. I'm trying to remember what Sheila likes to burn. The group's got almost 150 people, no, so it's hard no, for me. Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl. Did I say Sheila? Yeah. Cheryl. I <laughs> Sorry, Cheryl. I'm trying to remember what you like to burn, because there are so many in the pe new people in the group. The Cheryl's not new. Because what you like to burn is going to influence the type of pens you buy. If you're into lettering and calligraphy, some of the pens would be a little different. If you're doing a lot of shading and things like similar to what you see me do, then I would suggest my pen still on. <coughs> Excuse me. I would just suggest the spear shader. The spoon shader, the medium ball tip, and at least the 9MS. 
I think those are four good ones to start. You get four different lines, actually more than that. You get into a small area, a medium shader plus writer. The spoon shader heats up differently than the spear shader, so it burns a little differently. And then the spear shader has surprisingly, and I say that because in the past it's never been my favorite tip, but this spear shader has become my favorite pen um, because I can get into small areas, I can make lines, I can do fur and hair. The biggest thing you want to look at are tips or pens that you can use in multiple different ways. If, it, if you're only going to burn one particular subject one specific way and you buy a pen specific just to that and you don't use it for anything else, then it's been a waste of money. But if you can pick out the pens that you think would work for the m most amount of, of different strokes and lines, you'll be really happy. So your question from CN, mm -hmm. is it possible to use Optima pens and a razor tip base? Yes. Though, in order to do so, because razor tip is the only brand in the U.S., Canada, North America, I should say North America, is the only brand that um, has a different connector. And what I mean by that is, there are pins on. That's a razor tip. Optima, Nibs Burner, Burnmaster, and Colwood are all the male connector and razor tip is female connector so you're going to have to buy an Optima cord which an Optima cord will fit on razor tip as long as you let Pat know that you're going to be using it on razor tip and then he won't um, oh, I'm holding the wrong end because that's for my pen let me see if I can get this undone easily all right there we go so this is the part of the cord that would hook up to the razor tip. If you tell him it's for razor tip, he won't squeeze the, um, this area and that'll allow it to plug directly into the razor tip. So you don't want to use the razor tip cord with what they advertise as This time I know where it's at. I remembered from last time. Razor Tip and Burn Master, and I got this from Burn Master, advertise this RCA adapter. You don't want to use it. It's shit, and you don't want to use it. Yes, I said it. It is shit. Oh, there goes the money. There goes the money. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Actually, no, I think it's at the beginning of the video. This is crud. Crap. Poo poo. Too late. <laughs> you don't want to use this. You can burn out your pens using that damn thing. Um, <coughs> Eve mentioned something, and I think it's a good idea. What's that? Well, she mentioned in the chat, but she used the term hot tip. Hot tip. That sounds like a good title for, for like short videos. For you. <laughs> okay. Hot tips. Hot tips. Yeah, cause I like that. I like that we're getting some other in some other input. Do you want to tell them what Cole suggested we do? Um, <clears throat> maybe next time. Maybe next time. Or you can tell them. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out um, because my birthday is tomorrow. Uh, my younger son and his wife came up to take us out to lunch and we were talking about YouTube and I was telling him how many awesome subs I now have and how excited I am for everybody coming in and he came up with this idea actually I'm going to give Elaine credit first because it was her original idea and Cole 
finish expanding on it. <laughs> they both, Colin's EP rates on it. Anyway, he wants me to do drawing while getting drunk. Not that I get drunk because I can't with my lupus and medication. But he wants me to start a drawing, you know, the way I normally would, and then start drinking on some wine and see how that drawing progresses. Is that did I explain it right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm curious what everybody thinks on that. All right, and now I'm trying to get the darker areas in, and I'm just using the very end. I need to write that down. Hot, hot tips, right? Mm -hmm. right? Let me find something to write that on. All right. Don't normally write on my board, but oh well. You're getting happy birthdays now. Oh, thank you. But what about the drawing with drunk? Or drawing while drunk? It's not drawing while drunk. What? What did he? I'm trying to remember. I'll have to talk to him more. So anyway, you know how when I was teaching Jason the, sec the second live to burn, we ended up with the elf dragon. What else was it? It's the dragon elk. Dragon elk. Um, oh, yeah. And how that progressed from one thing to something completely different. That's what um, my son's talking about. And I do like the idea. Now, getting drunk, mm, I'm going to say tipsy. Because if I have too much alcohol, it sends me into a flare up, and that is no fun. Cheryl's 11 year old is singing happy birthday, though. Oh, thank you. Does, does the 11 year old. Cheryl, what's her name? Or his name. You don't want to. Getting in here in the darker area underneath. And this will pop out the lighter area. Heather says drawing a DUI. <laughs> drawing under the influence. There you go. That's a good one. Actually, Grace, Grace came up with that at the same time. Okay. Well, here. Can you... Write these down, I'll try. please. I don't Thomas, lose them, because that's a good one, too. Thomas is the name. Hi, Thomas. And then Thomas. Thank you. Thomas is the name. Hi, Thomas, and thank you. In fact, we need to sing happy birthday as well. Today is our nephew Jeremy's birthday. In fact, we'll stop for a second, and we'll do it. Hopefully Jeremy is watching. Okay. You're going to have to carry this. That's fine. I carried it last time. I don't mind. In fact, we're going to stop. There we go. And sing happy birthday to Jeremy. Let's get our flame going. Make sure I'm on the right cord. Now I don't recommend doing burning with your burner uh, burner pens like this, but I think it's yay Fender a fitting happy birthday for those doing pyography. Let's see if we can get it to go red. Granted, this is on the detail cord, not the smartest thing. All right, so for Jeremy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jeremy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jeremy. <laughs> and thank you, Thomas. I really appreciate it. In fact, I wish I could hear Thomas singing. All right, so I have some lines in. I'm going to take away some of these other lines. I think I can get away with it. Having the landmarks down that I already have. It would help if I turn my burner on. 
Grace wants to know where the torch is. I think she'd prefer the torch. Right for, there. For birthday wishes. For birthday wishes? The torch? And now her screaming torch. <laughs> Am I supposed to turn it on and sing to Jeremy again? <laughs> Here, let's go in. Let's see, am I in enough? I need to bring it down. Oh, she says she'll send a video to your email if you like. Oh, that would be so cool. I have our business email listed down in the description, I think, don't I? Maybe. Um, it's on the page. Yes, I do right here. The very bottom. Zian uh, has a question. Yes, please. How important is low end heat adjustment? Very important. Because you're going to do most of your burning when you're trying to get, if you're going for realistic burning, you're going to do most of your burning below three. At least I do. Let me say that better. I do most of my burning three and below. So for me, it's very important because I like being able to have that really low heat and build it up. It's easier to fix mistakes if you make them and we all make them. Um, it gives more of that nuance burn. Let's see here, like in this area of the mushroom, I'm trying to think of the video. I was burning at about one and a half to two in this area. <coughs> in fact, all of what you're seeing here is burned below four. So that's how much different tonal range I've gotten from four and below. I think I went a little higher on the moss down here at the bottom that I zoomed in and you can't see, but I tend to burn on very low settings. And though it takes me longer to burn, I think I can get some better detail. And I'm not having a problem with something being too hot and over burning and casting I don't know if you've had it happen and at some point we all do where our temperature is a little too hot for what we're doing and it starts yellowing around the outside of the burn it makes it very blurry and doesn't look as clean the lower that you can burn on setting wise that won't happen So having that low end heat allows you to have better control. Let's see here, I can't I'm trying to think of a piece that I have with the overburn. I've been seeing that happen on a couple of different channels. They're using their burner at such a high heat that they're getting that overburn. And I think it takes away from the piece when you have that happen. Again, that's my personal opinion. I don't like that overburn. It makes it look very fuzzy. All right, so we're going upside down. So I can reach it better. There we go. All right, so now that I've got base laid down, I can and because a mushroom um, has texture to it, I am not going to smooth out the areas like I normally would on other subjects because I want that texture. I want it to, to show, to stand out. Let's see here. Now I got a line. So I'm drawing the tip away from the line to kind of blend it out. 
because that I don't want. Don't want the line. And I'm just kind of tapping and squiggling to get that texture that I want. Now here, because I am a little worried about the heel of this tip, I will end up switching over just because it makes it a little easier. And I think I will switch over to probably the small ball tip. Yeah. Let's do that. Small ball tip. And this is going to take a little higher heat because there's more metal at the end of the tip. Every pin heats up differently because of that fact. So, get some heat going. Is it raining? No. Are you just making noise? Not yet. Hey, we finally are getting rain. The monsoon is here. That makes me happy. Let's see here. No, I need to hold it. All right. So, we have a darker area underneath because our light's coming this way. So it's going to be darker on this side. Actually, in the photo, it would be darker on this side. Actually, <coughs> I don't have any cast light, so I can just go dark on both. I think I need to put you to bed soon. I don't know why. I don't know. Why is it upside down? Because I'm upside down. What? I'm working upside down. <laughs> oh. It's not you. I know you don't feel good enough. Okay. See, it's I'm working. See, look, I'm working I upside down. I was trying down. to figure out why they didn't do the mushroom upside down. Let's see. I gotta go in the opposite. What I'm looking at. So we get those in there. Tap those in there. I'm really not worried about if it looks exactly like the reference photo. No. I just want it to feel realistic. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at it and go, hey, that's the mushroom. So I can bring it down to two and a half. And I can use this ball tip to darken some of the area, especially under the cap. Because we're going to have that darker. There we go. And then for the ball tip, I do suggest paying attention because when you... And it happens to me all the time, and I have to try to blend it out because I'm not paying attention. When you go to to burn, when you first tap down, try to have the pin already in motion. And it's just a very quick, I don't even know if you can tell, that I'm tapping, that I'm t moving for really quick. Before I touch down, probably can't notice it. Let's see here, light's coming this way. This area is going to be darker. And see, now we've got the water back here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we know this is further back. So even though it's a lighter area of the water, I can take my ball tip. And do some negative burning around this part of the cap to darken it up but keep my shape this will also help this mushroom to stand forward a little bit because it's closer to the viewer compared to this water so this is going to have a little bit more detail, not necessarily as much as this one, but a little bit more detail than the water will. Because in this piece I have one, 
two, three, four. I have four different layers of perspective. So the, the water is going to be blurrier. This will have a little bit more texture. I'm trying not to outline it. And then let's erase. Trying to see what that line is right there. No, that's not my mission. Alright, take some of this out. Now I might leave this graphite line in so that I know where to stop for the rocks behind it because this is a lighter mushroom. In fact, I can use a big eraser. Get rid of this graphite line. I need to scratch my face, use the other hand. There we go. I don't want to burn myself. Let's get some of her shapes in here. Go a higher. Okay, for this smaller area, I actually could use the nine, the yeah, nine MS that I mentioned, which is this one, because this is smaller area. This will show what the little ones good for. Make sure I'm here. And trying to look at the chat because are I'm, you awake? <laughs> yeah. I'm just dizzy. I know you're dizzy. I'm sorry. I don't know why you've been dizzy. So let's get some of this in. Get some darks up in here. I'm just kind of squiggling it around like this so that it fills in the area but gives it a little bit more texture because we can't see all the folds in detail for this one based on the distance. So squigglies, very technical term, are your friend. Robin Short is in chat. Hi, Robin. Just trying to go the direction. And with this one, I can get into the smaller area. And when I want a little smoother burn with this tip, I touch down in some place darker and go in ovals so that I'm not getting quite the texture that it makes. There we go. Let's see here. This goes down. We can darken this some more. And when light hits an object, we do tend to have a lighter area in that shadow off to the side because it's round. We've got the light source hitting here and there still will be a little bit of a glow, though not nearly as light in this case as the highlight. So by trying to leave a sliver and darkening to the right of the highlight, I'm hoping for it to feel more rounded. I have to draw part of this down because the cap is covering. So we got about to here. And bring it over a little bit 
I don't want it to create a harsh line necessarily. I could even, let's see here, do we have dots on it? Yeah, we have some dirt dots on it. We also have a lip, so this pen won't work. Let's see what I want to use. Medium. I'm going to go back to the spear shader because I want to create that lip. Put it down to two. Alrighty. What time are we at? Yeah, I'm going to cut this one a little short for you, okay, love? Okay. I don't like when you don't feel good. Uh, thank you. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Alright. So let's... I want to go with the direction of the texture to get this lip. So right here it goes kind of straight down and over here it actually curves along. I know my light source is coming this way, so this way is going to be darker. Kind of get some lip in there. And draw it down a little bit because with that area being lighter, it's not giving the underneath filling that I want. So I need to darken this area. And it can go darker, but right now, I really want this lip. Let's see here. Darken that area again. And see, this is what I mean by making adjustments. As I darken this area up, I can see that the water needs to go a little darker. So nothing for me. It's completely finished until I've got all the areas in and I can adjust. But by doing that, it allowed the mushroom to stand out more. In fact, I could go, because I know this is going to fade into darkness. I can go a little darker. I don't have the reference photo for this area. So I can't remember if that's a rock or if that's water. Let's see here. I still have this part to burn, so I'm not going to erase it. But I am going to try to lighten it. See, and getting rid of the graphite allows you to see the, the burn more clearly. And let's see, let me pull that up, pull that down. See, right now I'm still only on two, but it's the I'm using the tip and it's allowing me to heat up, to darken up the area. I think I can go ahead and put. A light version of the water in. I can always fade that out later. But this allows me to focus on the mushroom. And I need to figure out what to work on next week. Because um, now that the AAC piece is done, I can work on this more and kind of catch us up to where I thought I would be. 
So what do we want to see next week? So where the lip goes to curve, the inside of that curve is going to be a little darker and that allows it to pop up the lip. I still feel actually this is a little too straight. So I can go into areas and kind of darken some areas and go and tap at the top to get that idea of texture. Again, we're not going to see everything on this mushroom. So it's going to be the areas that matter. Not so much the detail. Pop it up a little bit so our highlight is hitting on the lip. Our mushroom is shaped by the negative burn of the water. We got the shading under the cap. I'm not sure what this line is. If it's part of the stone or if it's part of the, I don't think. Mm, no, it's not part of mm, Is it part of the mushroom? Because it looks like the mushroom does go down. Actually, it is part of the mushroom because the stem goes up further. All right, let's pull it down. So I can go up with this stem. Separate the cap a little bit. So this also had a divided area. That's what caused just like this side is divided. It goes up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Guess what? Yes, I'm agreeing. <laughs> I thought you were asleep. No. Your breathing changed. Uh, Let's see here. Um, um, the ACMs uh, has a question about mm -hmm. ACC. <coughs> Let's see. Put that down. Let's see. Hey, is AAC still taking unofficial entries? I didn't find this month's theme or deadline from Instagram. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> you okay? Yeah, see, and they're always anything that's on yeah, all the unofficial um, is just a matter of tagging. The theme is um, urban animals uh, this month. So I don't know if. That gives you time to do what you want, but unofficial entries, it's just a matter of doing whatever art you want to do for the <coughs> theme and then tagging it so we can all see you. Does that sound right to you, Eve? I'm almost positive that's what it is. So if you want to make a video or just tag a the Animal Artist Collective so everybody can see, just a matter of doing it and as for seeing the theme i don't even see the theme when we vote i think if you go back to uh may's playlist i have a may aac playlist down in the description of my video it tells you what all the links are and where you can find everything so it looks different on the screen. Mm, is that a little better? Not really. It's not. 
All right, so the mushroom does need some more work, but again, the main thing is, is just following the texture, not getting too caught up in the details for this particular one because it is further back than this one. This one right here, uh, these right here, and these right here, which these right here are the same as these right here. Can I poke them? Right there. Um, these are going to be in more detail and paying attention to that detail, whereas this one is less detail. Let's back it out. Let's back it out some more. There we go. We're all the way out. There we go. So I still can't get the lighting right though so that you can see it better. I'm getting a glare. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. That's better. <coughs> so this, this mushroom, looking at it, I know this needs to go darker. My moss is going to have to, my moss and rock back here are going to have to be darker with this area lighter so that it sits right where I want it to sit in the perspective of this piece. In fact, my my rocks, looking at this now, knowing that this is where this value is here, I'm actually going to have to push the rocks and the water back further so that they're there, they're in the background. But right now when I'm looking at it, of course I'm looking at my hummingbird, and then down the beak, it's pointing to the water Whereas I'm going to want the beak going down, pointing to this mushroom that's going to have more con uh, contrast because it's going to have more detail. Ursus is in chat. Hi, Ursus. So that is where I'm at. So for next week, hmm. I think for next week we are going to I don't know you can see work on her crown. It's metal. It's a different texture than the rest of what I've been working on. So we'll do the crown next week. And it's also a smaller area, so hopefully I can get that like done or if not really close to done. Um, so if you have any more questions, we'll go ahead and Ask them now. So deadline, Eve's saying the deadline for AA, the unofficial AAC videos or pieces Thursday. is Thursday. That seems odd. Let's see here. Well, if you're curious, on the replay about the AAC stuff before it comes out on Thursday. Eve has put it all in chat. Very helpful. Thank you, Eve. Why can't I go down? There we go. That's what I needed. Okay, so recap. We worked on the mushroom. We discussed our wonderful Gila's Jessica and burning dark fur and sing happy birthday <laughs> i'm excited so tomorrow is my birthday and on thursday is my two-year anniversary on youtube my first video the <clears throat> excuse me my artist studio video went up and now i need to make another one because i redid it in here so maybe I can get a quick video for that done on Thursday as well. Okay, I'm going to go put Hubby to bed. He's, he's not doing too good right now. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here with us. And hopefully I helped. Don't forget to hit the like button, which is right down there. And hit the subscribe if you're new and leave me a comment. Let me know what you would like to see next week. Happy burning, guys. Bye.